And this is a real treat for us all because we are so rarely all in the same place physically in, in person, but also virtually as well. So it's very fun to have all the members of the, uh, well, most of our members of the Pathways Project team with us here today. But my name is Amber Hoy, and I'm the director of the World Languages Resource Center at Boise State. And I'm one of the co-directors for the Pathways Project. And we're very excited to share with you a little bit about what the Pathways Project is and really hone in on what it's like to be a student OER editor. What's it like to create OER that's shared with Idaho's K through 16? language teachers and and beyond. Uh, so what I'd like to do to get us started is to go around and we'll have everyone introduce themselves to the group. So if you could please share your name, your major and minor if you have one, and your role in the World Languages Resource Center. And I'll go ahead and call names just because I think everyone has a different order. So we'll start with Brenna. Hi, my name is Brenna McNeil. I'm a German secondary education major and I'm minoring in linguistics and global studies. And my role at the WLRC is OER editor. Awesome. Thanks, Brenna. Okay, Riley. Hello, everyone. My name is Riley Wiesler. I'm a global studies major and I'm minoring in both French and Chinese. And this semester, I'm a French OER editor for the WLRC. Thanks, Riley. Grace. Hi, my name is Grace Hall. I'm a junior studying Arabic, political science, and global studies, and I am an Arabic OER creator for the World Language Resource Center. Thanks, Grace. Ashley. Hi, my name is Ashley Johnson. I'm a senior studying media arts with an emphasis in public relations and a minor in German, and I'm part of the administrative team. Thanks, Ashley. Erica. Hi, my name is Erica Larson. I am a German major, and then I'm getting my uh, TESOL certificate this semester, and I am a OER editor and German lab conversation facilitator for the WRC. Thanks, Erica. Reagan. Hi, everyone. I'm Reagan. I'm a German major, and I am an OER editor at the WLRC for German. Thanks, Reagan. Okay, Mimi. Hi, my name is Mimi Fonstrom, and I'm a major in criminal justice with a minor in psychology. And I'm an OER editor here uh, with a specialization in French. Thanks, Mimi. Danielle. Hi, my name is Danielle. I am studying psychology with a minor in Spanish, and I am currently a Spanish OER editor. Thanks, Danielle. Taya. Hi, everyone. My name is Taya Reckonzone, and I'm a sophomore studying Spanish secondary education, and I am an OER editor here at the WLRC. Thanks, Taya. Alex. Good morning. My name is Alexia Mateo. I'm a senior studying Spanish and sociology, and I'm completing my internship as an OER creator this semester. Thanks, Alex. Camille. Hello, I'm Camille. Um, I'm a senior studying history, and as with many of the members on the team, I'm also an OER editor uh, with no really specific um, specification, but I love it. Thanks, Camille. Sarah. Hello everyone, my name is Sarah and uh, my major is uh, linguistics uh, with minoring in visual art. Uh, I'm in the charge of doing the Arabic activities in the World Language Resource Center. Awesome, thanks Sarah. And last but not least, Annika. Annika, sorry. Hello, I am Annika Henderson. I am majoring in German and Global Studies and I have a minor in Arabic and I am a German lab assistant. Awesome, thank you. So to start off today's conversation, I thought it might be helpful to provide our, our audience with some information about what the Pathways Project is and how we hope to positively impact Idaho's K-16 language teachers and students. Danielle, would you mind sharing with us a little bit about the Pathways Project? Yeah, so the Pathways Project is basically a collaborative network of open educational resources, which is where we get the OER. And, with an, and it has instructional language teaching and also professional development. There's over 600 activities on the website. Um, basically what we can do, what where our goals are, is we're working to create resources for teachers who may not have the access or the finances or the support to get those language resources. So by following national and Idaho state standards, um, our upper division students create activities for people to use 
And um, basically it allows for teachers to connect to each other and find valuable resources. And they can also, what we call the five R's of OER editing. And basically it stands for reusing, reworking, remixing, redistributing, and retaining. So basically what teachers can do is they can take the resources that they want. And then if they find something that they wanna change, they can edit it in any way they want. And if they think it could be beneficial for other teachers in the future, they can come to us and kind of give feedback of what they what we could change. And then we can go in and basically um, like rework it and then publish it again. Awesome, thank you so much, Danielle. All right, so I think the thing that most folks are going to be the, the very curious about is what it's like to be a student creating OER. We have a lot of faculty who are and staff who are creating OER, but it's it's and it's becoming more common to hear students creating OER. But I still think it's something that's really unique. So what I'd like to do is to hear from a few folks about what it's like to be a student creating OER and how this has impacted you positively and maybe some of the challenges as well. So let's go ahead and start with Brenna. Hi, yeah, so creating these activities has really been such a rewarding experience and it's contributed to ways that I want to make materials for my future classroom as a language teacher. I think it's there are some difficulties in trying to figure out how appropriate the material would be for the language level that is being that it's being made for so it's always a trial and error process when mm -hmm. you're creating material and the lab assistant is presenting it and teaching it to the students and then they give you feedback on how to improve it so that's always great to know um but i it's cool because we're providing materials for not only our own school but schools around us and schools around the country and it's really great. Awesome, thanks Brenna. All right, Riley. So for me, it's been a really amazing experience just because uh, sometimes, even though I love French and like French classes, they can be a little tiring with some of the material. So it's been really awesome to use French in a more practical way. And then also it's really helped me expand my communication skills, especially online, because it's harder to get feedback on certain activities when you're not there to talk to some of the students or the lab instructors. So organizing online meetings and then being able to get that feedback has really helped. Uh, some of the challenges, especially for me, is um, I have a tendency to assume that sometimes what I mean comes across as how I want it to come across when sometimes my instructions might not be as clear to other people. So through this experience in my internship, I've really learned how to um, take a step back and then try to view things from an outside perspective. And that's just helped me articulate myself a lot better, not only in the context of language learning and creating activities, but just like, like socially in, in my personal life. How many of you feel like you're better at writing instructions now? Yeah, absolutely, right? <laughs> okay, Mimi. Yeah, uh, being an OER editor is such a rewarding experience, especially since I'm not majoring uh, in a major that has to do with languages. So being able to have that part of my life and have my use my affinity for languages as a job, it's it's so great to be able to do that and to be able to share that part of my life with instructors. Um, and one of the challenges probably for me at least is when I'm not working with French and when I'm having to work with languages I'm not as comfortable with and you know mm -hmm. debating whether what I'm doing is right, you know, can I compare it to French? Um, but it, that's the one of the great parts is that I get to talk to native speakers and people who are more familiar with the language and just expand my communication, like Riley said. Uh, yeah, it's it's a great experience and I love uh, hearing feedback from instructors and also getting to witness students and think about what it was like as a student personally. And so it's great getting to know new people. Awesome, thanks, baby. All, right. All right, Sarah. Yeah, so for me as an international student, um, my first year of college was so challenging, like as st studying the second bachelor degree a degree in English. Uh, it was really frustrating for me. So um, it was very uh, challenging for me to communicate with uh, with my professors or my classmates. 
and I, I was looking for something to push me forward and give me more confidence. So uh, uh, I thought about helping other people always bring me joy. But in my situation, I was thinking about helping other people with, with the, something that I'm really good at. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, Arabic is my first language and I really, really enjoyed helping people in, to practice their Arabic. Um, and, and my position in the World Language Resource Center helped me to improve that and impacted me posit positively, uh, not just improve my communication skills, but also helped me to improve uh, uh, the, uh, the most aspects of, of my life. And one of the positive uh, impact uh, of creating Arabic activities um, I learned so many new technology tools like Basecamp, Canva, and uh, uh, also I improved my creativity in using some Google slide programs um, like uh, that one called SlideGo, SlideGo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, yeah, just helping people. Um, it's the most, uh, like it's, it's really precious and yeah, that's all. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. And I'm so glad that you mentioned some of the technology tools. If we have time to visit that question, I saw many of us nodding. Um, we've learned a lot of tools, especially working remotely, that we, we'd be excited to share with everyone. All right, and I think the last person we're going to hear from for this question is Alex. Hi. Um, so this semester, my project is I'm creating sample activities for non-native English speaking students. Um, so their English as a second language lessons and they're going to be put on OER Commons. Um, a challenge, I think, is I've never created lessons before, but I have edited them with that WLRC in the past. So creating new lesson plans and just seeing what um, non-native English speaker speaking students would like to learn is super challenging. Um, but it is really awesome to be involved in a community like this and to be giving back and in, um, in a way that I think is going to be super um, helpful and uh, practical for people. Thanks, Alex. All right, so now that we've heard a little bit about the benefits of creating OER and some of the challenges, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the materials that we have available on the Pathways Project and what materials we have um, available specifically for Idaho K through 16 language teachers and students. Camille, would you mind sharing that with us? Yeah, um, so as Danielle mentioned earlier, we have over 600 activities, which is mind blowing because when I first started, we had probably around 200 to 300. Um, and what these activities are, are they are interpersonal speaking activities along with um, webinars, professional development that we've created. And then one of the most how do I put this? One of the most interesting or um, awesome things that we also have are cultural activities. With learning a language, it can be very difficult for educators, especially in Idaho, to find culturally appropriate um, resources and materials and integrate them into their classrooms. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things that the Pathways Project um, not only has, but um, we've created and really developed. Um, and also, as Danielle mentioned earlier, all the interpersonal speaking language activities that we have align specifically to national and Idaho state standards. And that's really important because with a lot of curriculums, they do require their materials to be aligned to certain standards. And so that really bridges a barrier or opens um, it up for Idaho K through 16 educators. Um, so there's a lot that I haven't really mentioned, um, but I can't go through everything because that would take an hour. Um, <laughs> but we have created quite a few, not only awesome and reviewed activities, but just things that educators can actually implement into their classrooms very easily. Thanks so much, Camille. And I think one of the coolest things too is that our activities are created by students for students. So nobody knows their peers like their peers, right? So I think that all of you, when you're when you're thinking about activities, you really try to think about what would be what are activities that you've enjoyed in the past, or what's what's fun, or um, sometimes too. You mentioned culture, Camille, and I'm glad you brought that up because sometimes our textbooks they're not updated with the latest music or videos or, or things related to the arts and culture. And so we're really able to bring in if there's a if there's a video, an Arabic song that goes viral, for example. We're 
we're able to bring that in and talk about that that week in lab, which is really fun. All right, let's talk a little bit about what value you find in um, OER as a student. So I'd like to start with Grace. Um, so yeah, as an OER creator, my project is creating an Arabic textbook for intermediate Arabic students con to continue pursuing Arabic post the minor that's offered at BSU. So I find value in my OER projects because as a student pursuing an Arabic minor, I personally saw that there was a lack of resources available for students that wanted to continue Arabic. And I was frustrated with what felt like um, no support to help me continue my journey. And so when I found out about the World Language Resource Center, I, and how I could create my own project, I decided to create a project to kind of help mitigate all the issues that I was frustrated with and um, sad about not having like the guidance and the resources and the ability to continue Arabic without paying thousands of dollars to go overseas or a online program. So I started my own project um, and I, I find a lot of value in it because I'm not only practicing my own Arabic skills through the project, which helps me because I finished my minor, but also I feel like I'm doing something bigger than myself and contributing to the Boise State community, which is so rewarding. Um, and in addition to um, finding value as, um, out of my project as a student, it's also inspired me to pursue a future in teaching English or Arabic. Um, so through this project, I've actually started finding out, um, volunteering through ESL positions. I currently intern at CWI in their ESL courses. Um, and this has completely changed my trajectory from going from you know international relations and ambassadorship to also considering maybe teaching overseas um, and being an English teacher in the Middle East to marginalized communities. So cool, Grace. All right, let's hear from Reagan. So for me, learning how to create OER activities has been super helpful because it's really shown me the importance of being able to present information in a way that is clear and easy for students to understand. And then this skill helps me in my own studies because I'm better able to take notes and record information in a way that I'll be able to clearly understand later. And having experience with OER will be valuable as a future educator because I will know the resources available to me and how to access them and I'll be able to present that information to students in the most effective way possible. Awesome. Thank you, Reagan. So we talked a little bit about technology tools and right now, given COVID-19, our team has been working remotely for over almost a year now, which is hard to believe. Um, so I would love for us to talk a little bit about some of the tools that we use for collaboration and feedback. In other words, how do we get the work done without being together face to face? Is that something you'd be able to talk about, Erica? Yeah, of course. Um, so as an OER editor and conversation facilitator, we have been able to access so many amazing tools, but Zoom and the apps through Google, such as Google Drive, Google Slides, and Google Docs have really been a saving grace, at least for me. Um, I absolutely love the private chat feature that's offered through Zoom because we are able to message each other in a variety of different ways, that being um, direct messaging through typing or sending voice memos or also just the simple feature of zooming somebody in the click this one click so you usually have to create an invitation send that invitation to somebody wait for them to get it and it's kind of a longer process but through the chat feature in zoom you can just say hey um, for example like Brenna or Reagan can I talk to you about this lab they say yeah I hit a button and they're on my screen and it's truly been a lifesaver um, and then also through Google, we are able to use so many of the features. It's really nice because we're able to access all of the same documents through our shared drive. And that hassle of sending the link also again and giving somebody the permission to access is no longer there because we're all part of the editing team. Um, yeah, I just really love it. It's honestly been so nice. And for instance, this week, um, there was a example of Brenna was working on a project or she was modifying a project that was originally created for face-to-face -face, and the activity just did not function for an online lab. She messaged us through Zoom and said, hey guys, um, what are your thoughts? This activity isn't going to work. And we were then able to go into the drive individually, look at the project, and then message her back and say, hey, these are our thoughts. And even on top of that, we're able to message through the Google apps. So we're all in, able to individually work on the Google app. So I can leave comments on the Google slides or I can message her or I can Zoom her and we can be sharing a screen, looking at the same activity and saying, hey, what are your thoughts on this? 
but there's so many tools that we've been able to learn and they are so incredibly helpful, but it's been really easy communicating through online. And I think it's honestly a little more effective than in person sometimes, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. Awesome. Ashley and Annika, we haven't had a chance to hear from you. Do, are there any tools that you want to talk about or, or um, comments on OER that you'd like to share with the team? What I love about OER is the ability to download an activity and make it your own. And uh, especially being able to partner with like Google Drive, it's so easy to be able to download it there, see it, teach it right away, or be able to make a copy and then customize it for yourself. I just think that is an incredible skill. It makes it so easy right at your fingertips. I love that. And I also love that it on the OER Commons, it shows that there are materials needed potentially. So if you, if it's going to be in person, you need whiteboards and markers, sure, it's there. If it's a Google slideshow or cards from Canva, there's a link there that you can just click right on and same thing, just show it or copy it and customize it. And it's just absolutely wonderful tool that we can all use and all get better at. Awesome. Um, I um, agree that Google Drive has been like a lifesaver during this pandemic. Um, I personally like to write a lot of things down. And so being on my computer a lot, it, it has made me, you know, move um, that type of medium. And with Google Drive, um, it's really nice that it automatically saves because with the Word docs, like, I'll be like, okay, I'm done, close out of it. Oh crap, I forgot to save it because mm -hmm. when I write it down, it's just in my notebook, I can just open it up. But with Google Drive, it's there and it's very, very nice. Wonderful. All right, so I think what we'll do now is we'd love to open it up for some questions. I see a couple questions that have came through. Um, if you wanna use the Q&A box so we don't miss anything, that would be wonderful. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start off. There's a comment here from one of our German professors who says, great work to all of you in Pathways. So awesome job. Um, and I see a question from Laura that says, one panel mentioned, or one panel member uh, mentioned working from home. How has this collaborative OER work helped you um, with ex work experience outside of school? Erica, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I can answer that. Um, it's honestly helped me in a lot of ways. One of the things that I wasn't expecting is that I've actually been able to help my professors in teaching them about Zoom and the different features in Zoom. And then I'm also working on elementary school and just knowing the technology resources and being able to implement those into the different classrooms that I get to observe has been really amazing. And then on top of that, not just professionally, but in my school, being able to just having the knowledge of the different technologies that we use such as slides go for creating amazing presentations that are really fun and interactive um, using canva for creating a bunch of different things such as um, posters and cards and bingo sheets um, i've been really been able to incorporate everything that i've learned through the oer team into my academic my professional and my personal life just for activities for creating activities awesome thank you erica all right, I think we have a question for Sarah. Um, so Sarah, um, uh, Lara says, your English is very good. I help a lot of Arabic students, so this is really helpful. Please tell me how you were introduced to OER, if you can. Uh, okay, so I was looking like for, um, like I'm lacking the English communication skills. So I was looking uh, for something that I'm really good at, which is Arabic. Uh, how can I help in Arabic? And I look around, ask my professors, and they told me about the World Language Resource Center and how um, how I can help there with my Arabic. And yeah, I'm creating now the Arabic activities that um, that uh, other uh, team members uploaded to the OER. Yeah, and it's been really cool too because Sarah's also been able to be a consultant um, in a way for Grace. So she's been working with Grace to, and to provide her own perspectives um, as a native Arabic speaker as well. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I just wanted to break in and say it's 1055. We would invite everybody to take your five minute break. And um, I will be promoting some folks to panelists for the next, um, who have the next uh, program. But if you'd like to continue taking questions, you are welcome to do so. Our next program starts at 11.